Hi guys, welcome to the HL Neblet Center. We're gonna talk a little bit about playground safety today. Number one, rubber mulch or wood mulch is the best thing to have on your playground for your kids for their safety. Number two, never let your kids run up the slide backwards. Ben, get down from there. Number three, Ow. <laughs> make sure your kids are wearing the appropriate apparel and no jewelry while you're on the playground. Buster, Ow. come on. Number four. Hey Carly. What, what? Don't ever let your kids jump out of swings. Good morning, everybody. I want to welcome you all to the uh, 2021 United Way campaign kickoff event. We're going virtual this year, so welcome everybody. I'm glad you could make it with us today. We're here at the HL Neblet Center. We wanted to highlight this place because it's a, a fundamental learning and activity spot for a lot of the youth in uh, the Owensboro, Davis County area. A lot of the funds at United Way um, raises and that we help them raise goes towards facilities like this. Um, my name's Carly Walton. Again, I want to welcome you all. Um, I'm one of a four-person team. We've got myself, Buster Ashley, Ben Carlisle, Sean Brumfield in the house today. We're all going to talk to you a little bit about our uh, goals and thoughts going forward for the 2021 campaign this year. And at the end of this little presentation, we're going to have Doug Eberhardt of United Way of the Ohio Valley uh, step in and speak with you as well. So I will hand it over to Ben. And again, thank you guys for joining us. Good morning, Southern Star, Ben Carlisle. Uh, super excited to kick off the 2020 United Way campaign today. Um, and I just wanna start by saying thank you. It's a huge blessing to work for a company that supports uh, the communities that we live and work in, but it's even more of a blessing to work with people that support the communities that we live and work in. So uh, just thank you for always responding to the call and, and helping those that, that are in need. And I look forward to seeing what we do this year. So real quick, I just wanna cover the 2019 results. Um, our goal was 150 donors and a, a monetary gift of $80,000. And the results are in, and we had 152 donors, and our monetary gift was $87,933. Both of those are over a 20% increase from 2018, and that monetary gift is the largest that we've had in at least the last five years. So thank you for responding to the challenge last year and not only meeting our goals, but exceeding them. Uh, because you did such a good job, we're gonna raise the bar again for 2020. And so our goal for 2020 is 186 donors, which given our Owensboro workforce is about an 80% participation rate, which we think is absolutely achievable. And then our monetary goal is $100,000, which if we hit our 80% participation rate, that monetary goal will be no problem to hit. So we set the bar high, but we know that at Southern Star, we always respond to the challenge and we not only meet goals, but we exceed them. So we're looking forward to see how great you guys do this year and how much we can impact the communities around us uh, through our 2020 United Way campaign. Thanks guys. Hello team. I want to first say thank you for your continued support and generosity with United Way. Uh, as Ben mentioned, we have some very aggressive goals this year. And uh, in order to achieve those, we're gonna need everyone's help and commitment. Uh, it's gonna be a big challenge for sure. Uh, and with that, I'd like to issue another challenge to everyone. Not about the contributions or goals or, or incentives or anything like that, but rather how we think about the campaign in general. I've been a volunteer with United Way for about 15 years now, uh, but before that, before I got involved, when campaign time rolled around, I thought more of, do I wanna to give to United Way or do I not wanna to give to United Way? And that was really the basis for the decision. Uh, but as I got more involved with the, the program itself, I started to think about the nonprofits behind the scenes, the agencies themselves, who actually benefit from all of your contributions. Uh, so that's what I want to challenge all of us to do this year, is to think about those agencies. Think about the kids that we're helping to feed. Think about the, uh, the victims of domestic violence that you're helping provide safe environments to. The, the homeless in our community 
that need a place to stay and a warm meal, and you're helping to provide those things. So that's really the goal this year, is to, to put yourselves in that mindset. Uh, you may be like I was and, and think about, do I give or do I not give? But if we start to think about all the ones behind the scenes, those agencies that really need our support, then the decision becomes a lot simpler. You know, during normal times, these agencies, it's a battle for them day in and day out to, to come up with funding. To, to keep their doors open, like the Neblet Center here, to, to run the programs that the, the community needs. But these aren't normal times. Normal, normal times allows for fundraisers and, and other f sources of income. But as we've seen uh, this year, a lot of those activities have either been limited or canceled altogether. So as I see it in the 15 years that I've been with United Way, and I've looked at what we've done in the community, this is one of those critical years because funding sources are becoming more and more limited. And so what we do this year is gonna have a, a huge impact on all these agencies to help them provide shelter for the homeless and, and help those kids get that next meal. So that's the challenge that I wanna lay out to everyone uh, is to think about those agencies as we go through this. The financial review process that I've been a part of with United Way for the last several years, I want everyone to know that we have uh, a, a group of volunteers like you, like me, that is behind the scenes helping to make those, those allocation decisions. We look at the, 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 uh, the communities, we look at the, uh, the agencies, we look at their programs, and then we come together to decide how we want to invest your dollars. So you do really have a team behind you helping to make those decisions so you can rest assured they're being invested wisely. I wanna thank everyone again for your continued support. Uh, I know not everyone has the, uh, the opportunity to see firsthand what this campaign does into the community, but I want you to know that what you're doing makes a difference. It changes lives. And as we look at our goals this year, and those goals have increased quite a bit, just keep in mind the reason for that is because we want the opportunity to change more lives. So thank you again. I'm very proud of, of the, uh, the campaigns that we've done in the past, and I'm proud of everything that, that you guys have done to be a part of that. Looking forward to a great campaign this year. Thank you. All right, good morning, Southern Star. First off, want to uh, let you guys know how much I miss you. Wish we were in the office doing this in person, but you know how 2020 has been. It has thrown us a bunch of curveballs. So I'm here to uh, talk to you about the incentives that we're going to offer during the United Way campaign. Uh, the United Way campaign is going to be September 15th through the September 30th. And midway through the campaign, we're going to do a drawing. Uh, it's going to be anyone who decides to participate in the United Way campaign. It can be a fair share or it can be $2 or whatever you want to give is for anyone who decides to participate. Uh, the live drawing uh, will be for three $25 gift cards on September the 18th. So we'll give away three uh, $25 gift cards. The other incentives that we're going to offer uh, is um, at the end of the campaign when it's over with is we're going to give away five $50 gift cards, and that's for anyone who decides to participate in the campaign. We're also going to raffle off two laptops. So we're going to have two laptops to raffle off for anyone who decides to participate. Now, the other prizes that we have are going to be for fair share givers. Fair share means that it's going to be one hour of your pay a month. There'll be a box on the form that you can click that'll say fair share. So remember, it's just one hour of your pay a month. Uh, we're going to raffle off two one-week PTOs for 2021. We're also going to raffle off two two days extra of PTO for 2021. And also, if you check that box for a fair share giver, you're automatically going to receive one day of PTO for 2021. So that's for anybody. You won't even be in the drawing. So if you click that fair share giving, you're going to get that extra day of PTO. Also, we want to have our participation numbers climb this year. So we want 186 participants this year. That didn't let you guys know earlier in this video. Um, so if we reach 186 participants, we are going to give the company a uh, nacho truck. And that you're gonna to come to the uh, Southern Star. We'll offer you that nacho truck. We're also gonna have drinks there and then we can socialize, uh, of course, practicing social distancing, having our mask on, but you can have nachos and you can have a drink while we're in the parking lot talking. The other thing that we are going to do is we're gonna have a competition within our directors. So I challenge you directors, a nice little competition between each other 
to do a uh, little head to head. We're gonna have a trophy at the end and uh, it's gonna be friendly and uh, we're just trying to get as many people as we can to participate in United's way. I wanna thank you all for everything that you guys do at Southern Star and I also wanna thank you for giving uh, the United Way for 2020. Thank you. Hello, I'm Doug Eberhardt. I'm with United Way of the Ohio Valley and I'm here to say two important words to you and that's thank you. Thank you, Southern Star, for your kindness and generosity. It's because of what you do and the decisions you make to support United Way and the more than 55 programs that really allows us to have such a vibrant and growing community. United Way is unique. We're an organization that focuses on the community as a whole. We don't focus on one type of service or one age group. We really do look at data, statistics, and program outcomes to really make a difference and choose how to invest the money back to the community to make sure that it's a great place for all of us to raise our children, to live and to work and just enjoy life. Part of those statistics and data include items such as one in five children are food insecure right here in our community. We know that one in three women and one in four men will be sexually assaulted and raped or stalked or physically abused by an intimate partner sometime in their life. We know that 15% of the people that live in our community are living in poverty every single day. That's the reason why we're here at the HL Neblet Center to really talk about what happens here, what happens as part of the program. So United Way focuses on the building blocks of what's happening in our community. Building blocks such as education, health, and financial stability. These three building blocks create the foundation for an individual or family to begin to grow and to be successful in their life. Here we see 275 children are being helped. We see that they are getting school and taking care of childcare. We know that they're part of the educational program in today's environment with COVID-19. These children all come from low-income families. 95% of them are recognized as being in poverty. What does poverty really mean? That means that a family of four cannot make more than 26,000 $700. Imagine a working mother and a working father, 40 hours a week making minimum wage. That's only $29,000 a year. This program cost around $3,200, $3,300 a year for a child to participate in. It's because of the individual's kindness and generosity like you that make this possible. These statistics are all about proving and showing that your investment makes a difference in a child's life. We know that by turning and helping children, helping seniors, helping families, we give them the foundation, just like this rock wall. They start off at the very beginning with education, getting a good job, making sure they're healthy and stay connected. As, as they grow, they're reaching higher and higher peaks. That's what you do at Southern Star. You allow people the opportunity to get to the peak of their choosing and a level of success. And on behalf of the thousands of people that we serve, on behalf of the thousands of people that you may never meet, thank you. Thank you for your kindness. Thank you for your giving heart. And we'd ask that you consider giving a gift this year if you've never given before. And if you've given a gift before, please consider renewing your gift once again. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful day. I'm Brenda Knollenberg. I'm the Development Manager for Hospice and Palliative Care of Western Kentucky. 
one of the things that we do in the community is provide hospice services in Davis, Hancock, Hopkins, and Muhlenberg County. And basically, if someone has a terminal diagnosis, and that's basically if their prognosis for their disease is that they have six months or less to live, we're able to serve them through our hospice program. We also provide palliative care services, and that's for anyone with a serious or chronic disease. And then we have bereavement care that's offered to anyone in our communities in need, regardless of if their loved one has been served with our um, hospice or palliative care services. We have some great stories of our patients that have been served through hospice and palliative care. Uh, one of the ones that comes to mind is we had a patient and his wish was to fish. Now, one of the things we do with our families is offer them to help them with end of life wishes. And so this particular gentleman just wanted to fish. So we were able to find a location that we could take him and his family. And what's really cute is his wife went out there with him to fish. And she's actually the one that caught the first fish. And I was just told it was also the biggest fish that was caught. But what a great thing just to build memories and, and just to uh, spend time with loved ones. Some wishes are small and some are a little bit bigger. We've also had a couple of weddings here at the Hartford House. I'm sitting at the Hartford House now. And we've had a couple of weddings. One of them was a young woman and her father was uh, a patient here at the Hartford House. And she wasn't sure if um, he would be able to see her walk down the aisle just with his prognosis. They just weren't sure that was going to happen. And so she was able to get her wedding dress early and she put it on and we were able to get a tuxedo for him. And he was there in our chapel, our meditation room, and she walked in and he was just able to see her um, in her wedding dress. The story is going to make me cry on video, but he was able to see her in her wedding gown. Um, and they actually played that at her wedding. He was, he was not able to attend. He had passed before the wedding, but um, was able to play that uh, video. It was all videotaped um, at her wedding um, so that he could you know, she could have him as a part of that. Another thing with that that's really neat is our nurses helped him write um, a letter to her that could be read to her on her wedding day. And just what a special thing that is. So those are some of the cool things that, uh, that hospice can help with when we're serving patients at the end of their life. And so just things like that that people don't think of. You know, our mission is helping individuals live with dignity through the final stages of life. And that's one way that we can do it. And we're just so privileged um, to be able to get the support from the community um, because that's how we're able to do this. You know, our, the Medicaid benefit, Medicare benefit does not pay for wishes for our patients, but it's people in the community that are donating to hospice that, are, that allow us to do that. And we're just so grateful um, that these people have that time and those memories and that we get to help with, with that. And that truly is a privilege.